All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything on this spectacular Friday evening, July 19th, 2024. And guys, I got to warn you that this rant might get interrupted uh, by some people arriving at Bugs in a Jar Farm who I'm keeping an eye out for. Uh, at which point I probably will not restart it. Uh, and of course, being Friday, it is this week's Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant. Where I, I have got to say... Uh, this might be the single biggest dog choking bucket of unadulterated horseshit that I have, that I might have uncovered in the mainstream media. And I think we have one article from medium.com since I started this roundup a half a year ago. So we are halfway through. 2024, the first year of the Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup, and the unadulterated horseshit is flowing like an, like a flooded river. <clears throat> this is just in no, this is just in the order this horseshit has rolled. This is over the past three days. Okay. Scientists seeking permit to dump chemical into ocean in experiment, experiment to fight climate change. <clears throat> Show me the lie. Show me the lie. Uh, spelled L-Y-E. <clears throat> Researchers at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution want to dump 6,600 gallons of sodium hydroxide, otherwise known as caustic soda or lye, L-Y-E, into the ocean off the coast of Cape Cod in an effort to slow climate change. The unusual plan will likely face significant headwinds, not just from regulators, but from local fishing communities and environmentalists as well. The idea is deceptively simple, because it is a deception. Otherwise, this is the big lie lie. The idea is deceptively simple. By diluting extremely basic chemicals in the waters, they are looking to increase the ocean's ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the air above, a process known as ocean alkalinity enhancement. It is just one of several geoengineering efforts aimed at slowing the advancement of climate change, but whether or not these efforts will pay off in the long run remains to be seen, and critics remain skeptical and concerned about the possible risks involved of dumping lye into the ocean. But 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 anyway, guys, I almost thought of uh, making my entire rant out of this uh, out of this flight of fancy from none other than the conversation which I have now lost all respect for and this is actually the conversation uh their their kids uh news where their their young readers ask these various scientists questions and so this 16 year old girl wants to know can basically we can, can we turn Mars into a new Earth? Can we just, you know, terraform Mars? And this is what some clueless moron calling himself some kind of scientist. This, this is just a little slice of a scientist 
responding, I guess, with no trace of irony to a 16-year-old asking, uh, as any 16-year-old with a brain should be asking at this point, can we just turn Mars into a new planet? So I'm going to pick up, this, this is right out of the middle, uh, this goes on and on. So, what is the best way to give Mars an atmosphere? Although Mars has no volcano, no active volcanoes now, at least as far as we know, scientists could trigger volcanic eruptions with nuclear explosions. The gases trapped deep in a volcano would be released and then drift into the atmosphere. But that scheme is a bit harebrained because the explosions would also introduce deadly radioactive material into the air. A better idea? A better idea than blowing up volcanoes on Mars with nuclear bombs? How about redirecting water-rich comets and asteroids to crash into Mars? That, too, would release gases from below the planet's surface into the atmosphere while also releasing the water found in the comets. In the comets. NASA has already demonstrated that it is possible to redirect asteroids, but relatively large ones, and lots of them, are needed to make a difference. There are numerous ways, and then uh, we also have to turn up the heat on Mars to make Mars cozy. This is making Mars cozy. There are numerous ways to heat up the planet. For instance, gigantic mirrors built in space and placed in orbit around Mars could reflect sunlight to the surface and warm it up. You know, here on this planet, we're trying to put giant mirrors to re reflect sunlight away from Earth, but this, we're flipping that on its head and using mirrors to direct sunlight onto Mars to uh, heat it up. One recent study proposed that Mars colonists could spread aerogel an ultralight solid material on the ground. The aerogel would act as insulation and trap heat. This could be done all over Mars, including the polar ice caps, where the aerogel could melt the existing ice to make liquid water. And it keeps going on from there. But uh, I think we get the point. Good God, how many years have we been hearing this one? <clears throat> From Mars to Florida, officials unveil world premier highway technology that could change the future of electric vehicles. Florida is working on a way for drivers to charge their electric vehicles on the go. Uh, the, the, I have to do a whole rant on this outfit called Clean Technica. And, you know, th th this is one where they are uh, just electrifying, an, an, I guess, a four-mile stretch of uh, this planet-killing new uh, highway in Mars. I remember doing a video of this new uh, road. I think it's the Tollway Highway 516, which is an absolute environmental catastrophe in Central Florida. But they're going to apologize to the planet by electrifying the road so while electric cars are driving down the road, the road will be charging them. Uh, I've heard and I've been hearing this bullshit 
for how many years ain't gonna happen. Okay, our one article from medium.com from this clueless moron, never heard of this woman named Sarah Miller. But Sarah Miller uh, is outdoing herself with her personally determined contribution to climate saving. Yes, global solutions to global climate chaos are crazy complex. <laughs> Uh, 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 hope lies in personal action. Yes. What if instead of adding our sense of helplessness by poring over complex scenarios that outline supposedly comprehensive solutions to the Earth's climate chaos, solutions that no one is empowered to implement, we set our own personal and household goals for cutting emissions. Yes. All right. The important thing is to do as much as you can. No, I'm sorry. The important thing to do is to do as much as you feel you reasonably can in an unreasonable situation to make your own personally determined contribution, otherwise known as your PDC, to saving the earth. Not someday, but now. Yeah, so anyway, uh, what are some of Sarah's advice? Uh, okay. Still, if regional and local governments wait for national governments to keep the planet habitable, it won't happen. Ain't gonna happen. So at least she understands that it ain't gonna happen on, on any sort of government level. That's clear. It is clear it ain't gonna happen. And if individuals wait for regional and, glo and local governments to keep the planet habitable, it won't happen. That is why individual and household personally determined contributions are vital. Don't think about how little your PDC will change some computer-generated genera calculation of the enormous global problem. Don't think about whether what you are doing is more or less than what your neighbors are doing. Trust me, it's more. Or people in other countries are doing. Or whether oil companies are really to blame. Or billionaires with private jets. Just act. Just act. The situation is dire, regardless of where you live. Odds are you can see that in your own weather. And everybody is complicit to some degree. So it is vital that everybody acts at every level all the time. Act because it is the morally responsible way to live your life. Act because it will help you feel less helpless. What does acting mean? What does acting mean? This is the question that's been on the tip of my tongue ever since I started this rant. All right. Acting may mean buying an EV, or it may mean just driving slightly less in your old gas guzzler fully insulating your house, or, if that's too expensive, putting in dark shades to keep out heat in summer. Yes, installing solar panels on your roof, or drying your clothes on a line to save use of the electric dryer. It may mean growing vegetables, or it may mean 
shopping less. Acting means doing what you feel you can reasonably do, remembering how dire the situation is. And uh, so that leads us into the third biggest story on the planet right now uh, from Associated Press, Yahoo News, making this the third biggest story on the planet. Humans caused climate change amid the suffering. Now they, meaning humans, must solve it. Yes, for decades, scientists warned that continued burning of oil, gas, and coal would have devastating climate impacts. Those impacts are being felt around the world. Yes. <coughs> so, uh, anyway, the first two-thirds of this article was written for Book Hermit. Uh, okay, but let's get to the meat of the matter. The overall picture is grim, but there are solutions. Climate solutions provide hubbub. Climate solutions provide hubbub. Climate solutions provide hubbub. Provide hubbub. Provide that global warming can be curbed. The world has lost decades in mobilizing against climate change because of denialism, misinformation, and inertia, among other reasons. But solutions are in sight and underway. Solar and wind power are now cheaper than coal. Offshore wind turbines have expanded greatly, you know, when they're not breaking apart off the coast of New England. Massive batteries are becoming more efficient at holding large amounts of power. Yes. These are just the most established forms of renewable energies. There are great strides being made in green hydrogen energy efficiency in building heat pumps, blah, blah, blah. The path ahead is not easy. No one technology or new law will solve the problem. Instead, solutions must be implemented at the same time. Of course, solutions do have a trade-off Sometimes environmental, sometimes human, sometimes both. For example, moving to a world of all electric vehicles will require huge amounts of minerals that must be dug up from the ground. Beyond considerable ecological impacts, some of the most mineral-rich lands belong to indigenous people who don't want mining in their territories. Yes. Oh, God. Some environmentalists object because of fears that wildlife will be hurt. The conversation about solutions is sometimes muddied by outsized attention given to technologies like carbon capture, which ain't going to happen. Even they, uh, e even they admit that carbon capture ain't going to happen. Or when politicians call on people to make lifestyle changes, but don't advocate for major policy changes. Despite the challenges, despite the challenges, the shifts happening in how we power our world represent her. Represent her. that climate change can be addressed 
Yes. Alright, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna touch this one. You know, so the number one headline today is that uh Joe Biden is going to drop out of the race probably in the next few days. And that is going to happen. Thank God, at least uh, uh, we, since we failed to get uh, Donald Trump to drop out of the race, at least Donald Trump is convincing Joe Biden to get out of the race. And, and of course, now they're looking for who is going to replace Biden. And here's an article looking at Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, to run her instead of Biden. If anybody on this planet thinks that Kamala Harris is going to uh, keep Donald Trump from retaking the White House, uh, I, I would make a, a, a joke here, but uh, I might lose my channel. So, uh, let's just say... <coughs> Kamala Harris beating Donald Trump uh, in the November election ain't going to happen any more than Joe Biden beating Donald Trump in the November election. But I've wasted enough of my breath on that. So, but we're going to wrap up this one uh I want to thank Brother Aaron. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, about uh, you know personal lifestyle choices uh, to save the planet. And NPR, NPR. All right, how to live without plastics for a month? Yes, according to the founder of a global movement. Uh, you know, NPR sitting there just uh, verbally masturbating, uh, actually suggesting, uh, I, I guess with, with no trace of irony, that Americans are uh, going to voluntarily live without plastic for a month. So this is, well, this month, I guess, would be plastic-free July, but I guess you can make this plastic-free uh, plastic August. Uh, so, uh, so, how can someone prepare for a plastic-free July or now a how can someone prepare for a plastic-free August? Okay, this, uh, this clueless moron bullshitter that they're interviewing here recommends carrying a plastic-free kit with you in your work bag, gym bag, car, or bike for leftovers or fast food. Yes, for... For people doing plastic-free month for the first time, Prince Ruiz recommends not trying to change everything at once. Quote, use what you have, do what you can, don't focus on what you can't do. Where have we heard this in the last 20 minutes? I uh, don't let those doomers, those Debbie Downers, bring you down by focusing on the fact that it ain't going to happen. N number one, it ain't going to happen. That one fucking person in this country is going to go a month without plastic. And uh, number two, it, it, it ain't going to happen uh, that even... If the entire country went without plastic for one month, uh, which ain't going to happen, it would do nothing to save the planet. Um, okay, 
the changes that stick, the changes that stick are the ones that work well with your current lifestyle, which is why doing too much can lead to burnout. Yes. A good place to start is looking in your trash can, refrigerator, and pantry to the review the types of waste you're creating. Yes, I bet. But anyway, um, trying to cut plastic use, use is not easy or even an option for everyone. It can require more planning, more time, and in many cases, more money which is three more reasons it ain't gonna happen. Still, individual actions can have an impact. Yes. So anyway, here is the way to start. So the writer, this NPR writer, uh, is making a commitment. She is, here is her commitment that she made on uh, NPR. This is this woman's four-part commitment. For one month, she is a promising to cut out online shopping and food delivery. She is going to fill her own containers, I mean, assumedly non-plastic containers, in the bulk section of her grocery store. She is going to carry a kit, carry a kit in her tote bag whenever she leaves the house and she is going to replace single use plastics with plastic free alternatives if any run out. Yes, in, 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 anyway, guys, uh, we are going, Americans are going to go one month without using plastics about as much as they're going to make Mars habitable by blowing up volcanoes with nuclear bombs. My guess is that they will be blowing up volcanoes with nuclear bombs before uh, w one American goes one month without using plastic. It can't be done. It ain't going to happen. Uh, it, 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 it ain't going to happen. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm recording this uh, on a plastic camera reading off of a plastic computer, drinking, uh, my mouth is touching the plastic lid of my uh, Yeti cup. Every swallow of margarita I have, uh, the last thing it hits before my mouth is plastic. Uh, when I start this car, I'm, I'm going to grab this plastic key, uh, turn on this gas-sucking truck, grab hold of my plastic uh, steering wheel. When I get back to the house, I'm going to grab hold of this plastic uh, door latch, lock the plastic door lock, unplug my computer from the plastic battery charger and uh, then begin my exciting Saturday night sitting here alone uh, on Saturday night uh, just thinking uh, how glorious no it's not Saturday night it's Friday night I keep thinking it's Saturday but anyway, I need to wrap this up because I need to go find out where my uh, where my people are. Where are my people? Bye, guys.